this morning a lot of moisture and really how it would play that really would influence the result of the match Paul Allis has a look at it okay well let's have a look at the pitch I think the bounce is fairly even not excessive the ball should go through fairly early on for the seamers if we just have a look down here fair amount of grass on this pitch been a lot of overnight rain and rain yesterday and this grass you can see as I rough it up there's a fair length of grass which I think early this morning will provide a fair amount of seam for the uh, for the seam bowlers if we come back down here there's a fair amount of cracking on this pitch around about the four foot mark see these cracks here these could open up during the course of the day with studs getting in those that could provide turn later on in the afternoon and I think the seam bowlers will hold the upper hand early this morning well that makes the toss even more important you Morris tosses Alex Stewart wins and knowing the makeup of his side there the strong pace attack of Pygott and Benjamin Cuffey and Murphy with Hollyoak to follow in Alex Stewart had no hesitation at all in deciding to bat and Glamorgan similarly were hoping they might win the toss with Watkin and Lefebvre and Gibson but they have to bat first umpires Kenny Palmer and George Sharp all set for a prompt start with Joey Benjamin to bowl to Adrian Dale encouraged by a bit of a way swing the ball before but he's uh, slipped that one down the leg side off the pad for four leg buys well I think that's always likely to happen in the first hour or so of this game the dampness the moisture that's been around the grass on the pitch is going to promote a little bit of bounce and that has climbed quite sharply Wonderful deliveries being uh, sent down. Well, that did provide the lateral movement. Look at that. That's gone like a leg break with bounce, and it's gone too much. And that's a super shot from Adrian Dale. Lent into it, and it's gone before. Well, that's the first half volley that's been bowled this morning, and it's produced the first boundary. Adrian Dale driving that through mid-off. Gone through a, a third slip vacant area, and it's gone for four. Well, a third slip might have pouched that. But it went very quickly off the bat. Really short boundaries behind uh, the keeper and the bowler here at Swansea. And there's no chance of cutting that off. Oh, he's got him this time. Alex Stewart takes the catch. And Cameron Cuffey has taken the first wicket for Surrey. Adrian Dale has gone for 17. And Glamorgan are 25 for one in the 12th over. Thoroughly well deserved. Cameron Cuffey has bowled beautifully this morning at both these Glamorgan openers. I suppose you could say it was just a matter of time. Cuffey's ideal line there off stump just outside. And that edge has gone quickly to Alex Stewart's right. Adrian Dale in uh, his temporary role as an opening bat for Glamorgan makes way for David Hemp. A very good stroke player, David Hemp. It's nicely played, beautifully timed by David Hemp. And Joey Benjamin didn't have a chance at mid off.
Oh, it's a spa by the captain, and Hugh Morris is gone. Cameron Cuffey has taken the second wicket, and Hugh Morris will be just a shade disappointed with that. 33 for two. And he was a long time for those four runs. Court Stewart bowled Cuffey. Well, victory for the bowler, but uh, really the batsman gave his wicket up there. The pressure perhaps told on Hugh Morris, and in the end, it's just a little lack of concentration. So now a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of Matthew Maynard. That's a fine shot. Just go and get it. Cool. Maynard looking now to take him on. A little short arm jab. There's a lot of power in that. And again, no great flourish of a back lift, but what a punch through the hitting area. Glorious. All he did, get onto the back foot and whack it and never a thought of running because he knew what had happened. That brings the 50 up for Glamorgan. Oh, beautifully bowled, Nick and out. Well, what a comeback there for Murphy. Smack through the covers and suddenly hooks the real big fish, that of Matthew Maynard. And now there's a problem for Glamorgan. He's gone for 13. Tony Murphy's just come on and produced the perfect outswinger. Look how wide that was. It was. A good tumbling catch by Alex Stewart as well. So Tony Cotty, gutsy little player, and now Glamorgan really got to try to rebuild and make what they can out of an innings that is starting to look very sorry. And Alex Stewart, all three catches so far with the gloves. Might have been an inside edge, and Kenny Palmer lifts the finger, and David Hemp has gone. A fourth catch for Alex Stewart, and Glamorgan are in trouble here. Four wickets down, 58 runs on the board, and David Hemp departs. 61 minutes, 38 balls. David Hemp caught Stewart, bowled Murphy, a second wicket for Tony Murphy. Well, disaster for Glamorgan and for Hemp, trying to hit that square on the offside. Ball's not bounced. He's got an under edge, and that's a very good catch from Alex Stewart. Bottom edge. Alex Stewart having to dive forward and slightly to his right. That's a fine, fine catch. New batsman is Robert Croft. Oh, that's very close. Yes, Robert Croft has gone. LBW Bold Murphy, a third wicket for Tony Murphy. No real doubt about the decision. Kenny Palmer was quick with the finger, and that's a disconsolate Robert Croft that leaves LBW Bold Murphy for naught. And Glamorgan in all sorts of trouble here, 61 for five. Well, I suppose it, it didn't really do anything, that ball. Robert Croft just played round his front pad, would have probably hit Milden leg. Otis Gibson. The new batsman. There he goes. A magnificent shot by Otis Gibson there. Straight over long off. People are still peering down the road to see where it's ended up. Oh, what a superb shot. Five off the over and uh, no better four runs than that boundary. Cotty, and also uh, given something like that, 
And Benjamin bowled much better in the opening spell. But simply asked for it and got it. Straighter and flick nicely. Ward chasing and he'll get it in. But three runs and that brings up the 100. We're in the 37th over, and that's better progress from Glamorgan, the 50 coming up in the 22nd. Well, they'll do pretty well if, if there's a shot like that. That was a glorious shot, behind square, but all timing. A touch of waywardness creeping into some of the Surrey bowling. Well, there's four more, and that brings up the 50 partnership. Super stuff for Glamorgan. But essentially, it's poor bowling because Alan Holiak's bowling to a 5 4 offside field. He's bowled three balls in this over, all leg stump or outside. Oh, he's bowled in, and Tony Murphy has struck again his fourth wicket, and that is a great hope gone for Glamorgan. Otis Gibson, the big hitter, and the man really who could have batted Glamorgan right through this recovery, has gone. Old Murphy for 23, 41 balls, 1 4, 1 mighty 6, and Glamorgan 123 for 6. Otis Gibson likes hitting it through square leg mid-wicket, but he's deceived by the pace or lack of it on the ball, and that's hit leg stump. Good cricket. Oh, he's got him, and Alex Stewart has taken a fifth catch behind the stumps, and Tony Cotty has gone. What a... Very good diving catch it was from the Surrey captain. And Tony Murphy has picked up a fifth. Yeah, so has Alex Stewart. Five catches. This is the best of the lot. Going high into his right with two hands. Brilliantly pouched. In comes Colin Metzen. He needs to play a leading role. There again, nicely timed on the leg side. You can see there the aggression of the Surrey fielding. That was a great sliding throw by Alistair Brown. And that's all part of a team that are very confident at the moment, very predatory, really. Top of the county championship, looking for a semi-final place in the Nat West. This is typical commitment from a side that are really top of the tree at the moment. Oh, the big shout for... the catch behind and George Sharp waiting for Colin Metzen to walk and Metzen had a little look up and Tony Murphy has taken a sixth wicket here it's the first time that a keeper in any county has taken six catches and Stewart now holds that record a lot for Steve Watkin to do now coming in with at least ten overs to go was a useful delivery for a better player. Yeah, and Watkins playing a sensible role here, just playing down the line of the stumps, and if he's not going to bowl at the wicket, I won't hit it. <laughs> well, Lefebvre has picked up a much-needed boundary. Four for the Hollander. And Morgan move on to 149. Roland Lefebvre can, can bat, in fact. He's not, uh, he's no mug. Now Lefebvre has made his mind up to go back for the second, and that must have been perilously close. 
he had actually made up his mind going for the first I don't think he even had a look up for the second well I suppose he has to chance his arm a little bit now and he didn't really want Steve Watkin facing the bowling uh, having shown a, a certain amount of reluctance to hit the ball good throw must have been close that only we will know how close how close do you want Adam Hollyoak to Lefebvre and it's gone high and handsome and Alistair Brown is underneath it and he takes the catch and Lefebvre is out it really was in a, a parlous position there to get runs on the board it's 153 for nine and Adam Hollyoak picks up his first wicket Roland Lefebvre out for 15 and really, uh, Roland Lefebvre had to do something like that. He knows that his side need 170 or 180 to be really competitive in this game, bearing in mind the aggressive Surrey batsman. And so he really had to do something, something about the low score. Yeah, a reasonable effort. Not a very long boundary on the offside, but he sliced it. And uh, a good running catch there by Alistair Brown. Well judged. Steve Barwick. The last of the Glamorgan batsmen. And that is the sorry scorecard for Glamorgan. Dale 17, the captain Morris 4, 13 each for Hemp and Maynard, 36, Tony Coddy. And Steve Watkin has pushed it through, stroked it through for four, brought a roar from this crowd. Well, they haven't had too much to cheer about today, as far as Glamorgan is concerned. Well, that's warned them just a little. That could be even better. One bounce four, and there's just a bit of sting in this ten. Simple game. Really, that was beautifully executed. You should uh, ask for a move out the order after that. Oh, he's gone up, and Alex Stewart has taken a seventh catch, and Glamorgan's innings has ended. It's 161 all out. Second wicket for Adam Hollyoak, but what a marvellous piece of keeping and captaincy from Alex Stewart. Seven wickets, seven catches for him. And Glamorgan, disappointingly, all out for 161 in the 56th over. Well, Glamorgan always in trouble if they couldn't bat out their 60 overs, and they couldn't. And the two names that stand out on that scorecard are Tony Murphy, he got six for 26, but seven catches for Alex Stewart, and that is a tournament record. Nobody could make anything of the Surrey bowling under difficult conditions. Tony Cotty was the best, and then Otis Gibson. But that bowling analysis, that really tells the story. Six for 26 by Tony Murphy. Two for nine at the top there by Cameron Cuffey. Support bowling by Adam Hollyoak. Seam up, two for 40. No spin used by Surrey at all. As a result, that left them requiring just 162 to win at a rate of 2.7 runs per over. So we join the Surrey innings in the third over. Watkin bowling to Stewart and just two runs on the board. Red shot. That really was, uh, it's not in any coaching book, but um, full treatment and I'll tell you what, timing and power. It's a good shot from Bicknell. Really is a good timer of the ball. Well, Steve Watkins looking a little bit tame. Not an awful lot of zip, not an awful lot of pep in this bowling. Close, playing no shots. Fly Palmer says no. Now where would this one have gone but for the pad? Well, he's not played a shot. I don't think that's come back enough. Oh, dear me. 
straight through. Well, we've commented on the staggering of the slips. One of them has gone. Keeper and the captain between them did this. Well, this is just what you can't afford to do. The Surrey captain pushing at that. Metzen, I think, has put off Hugh Morris by starting to come and then stopping. You can't do that as a keeper. Yeah, he's gone. Morris has gone anyway, but he stood too wide to get that. <laughs> well, that's as fancy a piece of footwork as you'll see. Steve Barwick down at um, wide third man. Wonderful bit of control there. I'm not sure about this bit. Oh, that, that was very, very close to taking the lakeside bail. Darren Bicknell trying to paddle this around the lakeside. And beautiful piece of keeping as well. Completely unsighted there. Oh, he's bowled him. Steve Barwick has struck for Morgan, and Darren Bicknell looking to paddle it down the leg side. He's done it once or twice before, and this time he's paid for the miscalculation. Bicknell gone for nine. And that ends a, a very good sequence of scores by Darren Bicknell, culminating in 235 not out in the last championship match. And Steve Barwick's bowling is quite difficult to assault, and that was a slightly unorthodox method. A sweep to a seam bowler, but I suppose it was logical, but you've got to get the bat on it. Change of bowling into the attack comes Otis Gibson. Oh, that must be very, very close. Could have been a wicket with the first ball. Well, I think uh, an inside edge just saved Alex Stewart there. Fine shot from Stewart, found the gap between mid-off and cover, and it's gone for four. Just slightly over pitch from Otis Gibson. Well, that's gone high and handsomely over cover for four. Over pitch from Gibson. Graham Thorpe really punching that away. Just got a bit of bat on it. Alex Stewart whipping this across on the leg side, not picking the line. Must have got a little inside edge on that, yes. Otherwise he was dead there. When you're in, Nick, you hit those. Got him. That's a marvellous catch. Alex Stewart, gone. Lefebvre has taken the catch at mid-on. And Alex Stewart has gone for 24. And I suppose Alex Stewart suffered here from his superb timing, because that was only a push. And he went like a rocket to mid-on. Great catch there. But uh, Alec is known for his fine timing. He was just a little bit early on that. Continues a run of lowish scores in these, in these games. Well, things are all happening here, and David Ward was scampering to get the other end, and a direct hit, and that might well have been out. And all the crowd in Swansea were cheering there because they thought he was caught cover, but in fact the ball was hit straight into the ground. But there was a run-out chance. Probably just home. Otis Gibson to Graham Thorpe. Oh, it 
was just wide. And it's gone for four. It would have been a superb catch. And there are chances going here. Yeah, it was going fast, though. Uh, it would have been an amazing catch, really. I think they'd have needed a, a Tony Gregg or a Joel Garner to, to get a hand on that, really. And that's a frustrated Otis Gibson in the middle of the pitch. Outside edge from David Ward. Short, and it's pulled away by Thorpe. May not go the whole way. It's a chase for Dale. And it's just beaten him. And that's going to beat Adrian Dale. A bit of a bottom hand punch that from Graham Thorpe, but it was an effective shot. And Surrey move up to 68. Yeah, a little bit of a thick edge from Graham Thorpe, trying to hit that through mid off, really. And the ball didn't quite arrive, so he just went through with the shot and hit it past mid on instead. Short and put away, and Otis Gibson takes it. Well, Otis Gibson at the second has removed David Ward. <laughs> That's a very happy Otis Gibson. Hartwood is in the mouth for a moment, but Adrian Dale has struck here for Glamorgan, and Glamorgan are fighting back. Well, really, that was uh, asking to be hit for six. David Ward didn't quite middle it. And uh, Otis Gibson doing the sort of uh, act that you normally expect under a big top. Juggling that a couple of times, but grasping it safely. Alistair Brown, who Glamorgan know a lot about. He's a hard-hitting batsman. Pretty difficult customer to bowl to. Coming in at five here for Surrey. There really isn't much of a crisis, but Surrey losing players just when the, moment, the momentum is gathered. And uh, the best partnership of the day, 62 between Cotty and Otis Gibson in the Glamorgan innings. And that's beaten Colin Metzen. No chance for the keeper standing up there. And paddled away. That's beaten everybody. It's a good shot. Graham Thorpe really in command at the crease here. Difficult man to set a field to against spin. That's taken from outside off stump. And he's also able to reverse sweep as well. Uh, but this one was the more orthodox type. A little paddle. slightly expensive over this is proving so Adrian Dale is very capable of picking up a wicket he's also very capable of giving too many runs away with loose deliveries like that and on a small ground they get punished well, that has been muscled away by Alistair Brown no chance for Steve Watkin to cut, cut that off and Adrian Dale is giving runs away here. That's four. Twelve off the over, and uh, when Thorpe's going and Alistair Brown's at the wicket, then a the game can suddenly disappear from view in, in half an hour. Then a shot like that. You couldn't see anything better. That shot of the day for me. Bit of width. Beautiful full flow of the bat. 
Not a great deal of foot movement, but it's timing and power. Might be another one. Really poor bowling, but uh, you couldn't see anything put away in more effortless fashion. Oh! Now then, was it a miss stumping? It was high and wide, whatever it was, but we're looking at technical things now. Well, he's, he's nicked it as well. Wide. Turn outside edge. Metz never had a chance. Still Gibson. And still Brown. Well, it's all right bowling a slow one, but if you uh, telegraph it and put it in that little area. Gone. And uh, Matthew Maynard in a little gesture of defiance. Maybe to himself, but Alistair Brown is gone. So Surrey lose a fourth wicket. And Alistair Brown in a very quick 39 off just 30, 35 balls, six fours. Characterises his innings, and he'll be annoyed with himself for getting out this way. Croft tucking him up on leg stump, trying to hit it over the top. And he punched it straight to Matthew Maynard. Adam Holyoke is coming in at six for Surrey. Could be gone, could be out. Graham Thorpe's innings has come to an end. Matthew Maynard taking a very difficult chance and snapping it up in a rather disconsolate. Graham Thorpe leaves, second wicket for Robert Croft, but it's Graham Thorpe is out for 56. Graham Thorpe there, paying the price of being overcautious, trying to turn this off spinner from Robert Croft on the leg side, getting a leading edge and a good tumbling catch from Matthew Maynard. James Boyling coming in at six for Surrey. That's gone. Just straying down the leg side and anything down there. And even if a bit of pad gets on it, there's no chance of cutting it off. Now Roland Lefair just Trying to bring his short leg into play. Getting his line wrong. Four runs is the result. And this is running away for four. And Surrey heading for a win here at Swansea in the semi-final at home. At the Oval against Worcestershire. And Hollyoke has not quite finished it. They've gone through for two, and they're going to go back for a third. So the scores are level. Three more to Adam Hollyoke. And we'll have at least one more ball. 48 overs, and Surrey have reached the Glamorgan target. That's it, and Adam Hollyoak finishes the match with four over extra cover.
and Surrey have beaten Glamorgan here by five wickets a match which Glamorgan really never came to terms with when they lost the toss at about quarter past ten this morning so straightforward for Surrey in the end Glamorgan needed to take early wickets they took the first three for 72 but then Alistair Brown with an innings of 39 from 35 balls and another good innings from Thorpe they put on 71 and virtually sealed the match and the bowling figures there we see steady stuff with Robert Croft picking up two for 24 but it was all too late as a result Surrey winning comfortably with over 11 overs in hand and uh, they won by five wickets man of the match there Tony Murphy and his medium pace brought him so, uh, we've given something like that and Benjamin bowled much better in the opening spell but simply asked for it and got it straighter and flick nicely Ward chasing and he'll get it in but three runs and that brings up the hundred in the 37th over and that's better progress from Glamorgan the 50 coming up in the 22nd well they'll do pretty well if, if